In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a logo reveal like this one. So before we get started, you're gonna need some stock footage to create this effect. A great place to get video effects and also sound effects is Production Crate. You can create a free account and start downloading elements and a pro membership comes at around $4 per month and it's paid annually. The elements which we're gonna be using today can be downloaded for free. So we're gonna go into video effects and media elements into the fire and sparks. First of all, we're gonna open fire bursts and we're gonna be downloading fireball 4. So as you can see, you can select your format and then download it. Then we're gonna go back to fire and sparks and we're gonna open embers and screen hits. And for this tutorial, we're gonna download this Ember Hit 2. So after you've downloaded those elements that we're gonna need, we can start off. First of all, I'm gonna be creating a new composition. I'm gonna call it main, and it's gonna be using the HDTV 1080 preset at 29.97. The duration is gonna be five seconds. So right now I've found this background online and you can find a similar one or even the same if you do a quick search, so don't worry about that. After you've found your background, drop it in and while you scale it down, press shift and that way it's gonna scale down proportionally. The next step is gonna be selecting the logo that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna drop it into the composition and I'm gonna press S to show me the scale property and I'm gonna set it to maybe 45% because I don't need it to be too big. After dropping in my background and also the logo, I'm gonna select the type tool and I'm gonna type in my text. I'm gonna type in flames and after typing in the text, I'm gonna align it to the center of the composition. Then I'm gonna use the arrow keys to adjust the position of the text. Now I'm gonna select both the text and the logo and again, using the arrow keys, I'm gonna move them slightly upwards. Right now, I'm gonna select my text and I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna change its color to orange and you're gonna see why a little bit later in the tutorial. So after doing that, I'm gonna place it underneath of the original white text. So the first step right now is gonna be selecting this background and we need to make it darker. So I'm gonna go into the effects and presets panel and we're gonna search for brightness and contrast and we're gonna apply it to the background. Right now I'm gonna increase the contrast all the way to 100 and I'm gonna drop the brightness all the way to negative 150. And then I'm also gonna select the effect, press Ctrl D to duplicate it and right now for the second one, we can set the brightness to maybe negative 120 and the contrast to 80 as it doesn't need to be that dark. The next effect that we're gonna apply to the background is gonna be called Tritone. So let's search for it and then let's apply it. Now for the midtones, we're gonna select orange, maybe a bit brighter, but not too bright. So this is the background that we're gonna be working with. Right now, I'm gonna open the project panel and I'm gonna select the two elements which we downloaded from Production Crate and I'm gonna drop them into the composition. So we have the ember and also the fire and I'm gonna make the fire start right here at the 20th frame. So this is how it looks. The first step is gonna be selecting the scale by pressing S and I'm gonna slightly increase it, but not too much, to 125%. And you can see where it starts. So I'm gonna align this start point with the left bottom corner of the logo. So right now, the fire looks like this. I'm also gonna take this ember hit, I'm gonna make it start slightly later than the fire and I'm gonna align it as you can see, it starts in the center. I'm gonna align the center of the ember hit with the bottom left corner of the logo. And this is what we have right now. So the next step is gonna be selecting this fireball and then pressing Ctrl D to duplicate it. 
I'm gonna take the one that I've duplicated and I'm gonna rename it to Matt. And then I'm gonna place it on top of the logo. So let's scroll until the fire covers the entire logo, which is right there. And then I'm gonna select the logo and with the playhead at this point, I'm gonna press Control Shift D to split the layer. I'm gonna take the first part and I'm gonna place this layer underneath of the matte layer. And then I'm gonna set the track mat to alpha matte. So what this does is it only makes the logo visible in the parts that are covered with the fire. So this is what we have so far. And then as you can see, this fire reveals the logo. So the next step right now is gonna be animating the text. And we wanna make it start at one second and 15 frames. So we're gonna select these two layers. I'm gonna click on the first one and then shift click on the second text layer. And I'm gonna press Alt and left bracket to trim them so that both layers start at one second and 15 frames. And now to animate these two, I'm gonna be using an effect which is called roughen edges. So first I'm gonna apply it to the layer which is on top, the white text. And as you can see, it has deformed. So we're gonna be animating this border. As you can see, when I increase the value, the text slowly disappears. So I'm gonna increase that value and I'm gonna create a border keyframe right here at the beginning of the layer. Then I'm gonna press shift and page down, which is gonna move me 10 frames forwards and then page down one, two, three, four, five more times. And that's a total of 15 frames. And right now I'm gonna change the value of the border to zero. And as you can see, this text is visible again. I'm gonna press U so that you can see the two keyframes that we've created. And this is the animation that we've made. And I took it a bit too far with the first keyframe. So I'm gonna drop this value to approximately 40. And as you can see, this is what we have so far. So right now I'm gonna take this effect, I'm gonna press Control C to copy it. And then I'm gonna select the second layer with the playhead at the beginning. And I'm gonna press Control V. And right now the trick is to slightly offset the white text and then we get this really cool effect with these orange borders, which makes the text appear into the scene. Now, this roughen edges effect slightly distorts um, these text layers. So I'm gonna select both of them after the animation is done and I'm gonna press Control Shift D to split them. Now, I'm gonna delete this one because we don't need the orange text anymore and on the Second part of the white text, I'm gonna delete the roughen edges effect and that's gonna make the text look normal again. So this is what we've done so far. Now the next step is gonna be to animate the brightness of this second effect to make it appear as if this fire lights up the scene. So we're gonna set a keyframe right here as it starts to appear and then once the fire ball is at its peak, I'm gonna set the value of the brightness to maybe negative 90. We don't wanna take it too far. And then back here, once the fire goes out, I'm gonna set it back to negative 120. So this is the slight effect that we've made. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is gonna help us to really sell this effect. We're gonna be creating a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer to displacement map. Right now, we're gonna place it on top of the text and also on top of the logo. We're gonna take this fireball, press Control D to duplicate it, and I'm gonna rename this to fire displacement map. So right now, I'm gonna place it on top. It doesn't really matter, but just so that you can see the layer that we're working with. So we're gonna search for an effect which is also called displacement map and we're gonna apply this effect to this adjustment layer that we've created. We're gonna set the displacement map layer to fire displacement map and then we're gonna change these values. So we're gonna set both of these to luminance and we're gonna increase the horizontal displacement. You can see what that does and also the vertical. We're gonna set the horizontal to 10 and the vertical to negative 10. So as you can see, 
this displacement map effect helps us to create kind of this heat wave as it is displacing the image based on the fire. So first of all, we're gonna turn off the visibility of this displacement map. And then we're also gonna slightly offset it in time so that we have this heat wave, which kind of more realistically follows this fire. And as you can see, this is what we have so far and it looks a lot more realistic. So the final thing that we need to do is we need to create a new null object, which is an empty layer. And we're gonna select all of these by clicking on the first layer and then shift clicking on the last layer. And then we need to parent them all to the null. So this way, all these layers are gonna follow the null once we animate the scale. We're gonna set a keyframe right here at the beginning with a value of 125%. And then right here at four seconds, we're gonna set the value back to 100. And as you can see right now, we've animated a simple zoom out. Now to make this look better, obviously, we're gonna select both these keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease them, and then open the graph editor. So make sure that you right click and that you're editing the speed graph so that you can see the exact same thing that I'm looking at. And this right now is the curve of our animation. It started off slow, then it goes to its peak right here and then it kind of ends. So we're gonna click right here until we see these handles and we want to make the zoom out animation peak right here. So we're gonna drag this handle to the left and this handle to the right. And as you can see right now, this is the point where the animation peaks and it looks like that. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Remember to check out Production Crate if you need video and sound effects as it has a really affordable pro membership. I hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial and that you found it useful. For more, please check out my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.